Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe toy review. This video is one of a series of four looking at the 1990 G.I. Joe sub-team Sky Patrol. The series consists of six figures, all with working silver foil parachutes, and four vehicles, all with vac metalized silver chrome bodies. They were all sold separately, and the vehicles had no designated driver or pilot. In this third of four Sky Patrol videos, I'm going to be taking a look at the Sky Patrol Parachute Assembler, Airborne, not to be confused with the 1983 character of the same name, the Recon Scout, Altitude, and the vehicle, the Sky Shark. Now, as I said previously, none of the Sky Patrol characters or vehicles made any appearances in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe, but they all do make appearances in the 1990 animated G.I. Joe TV series. Both Airborne and Altitude make their first appearance in the episode The Mind Mangler, and the shark makes its appearance in the episode D-Day at Alcatraz Part 1. To start off with, I'll take a look at Altitude, more specifically his accessories, and to begin with, the common accessory that all Sky Patrol figures have, and that is the backpack with the parachute. It's the same sculpt, just in a different color for each of the figures. Just pull the ripcord to open the thing up, and you can see it has the uh, silver parachute inside. And that looks like this. It's rather hard to get this huge parachute on screen, but there is the eagle and lightning bolt design on the middle of the parachute. As a matter of fact, the green rather matches the 1985 parachute pack, of which this is mechanically based on, although the sculpt is completely different. I want to take a look at his very unique accessory here, this uh, pistol and missile combination. Very interesting. And just like Static Line, there is no instructions on how to put this thing together. It's actually a three-piece um, weapon system with a rather large missile. It's almost like a shell, really. Kind of stubby. And then there's the brace, which has these pegs on the side. Both the missile and the pistol attached to this brace. Oddly enough, the brace is not actually mentioned in the contents list of the card, but... And here's the pistol. You can actually see the hole there, where it expertly hid it underneath some detail. And next he comes with a helmet, which has a visor. You can raise and lower that gold visor. And the whole helmet is, of course, removable. I do want to be careful with the visor, however, because it is a kind of a sparkly gold plastic, which I'm really not confident about um, its, uh, its ability to withstand some abuse. So I'm not going to, like, squeeze it up or anything like that. But here you can see the, the helmet without the visor in the way. From the neck down, Altitude reuses the body mold from the Conquest X-30 Pilot 1986 Slipstream. Now back when I had done my Static Line review, I had noted that none of the Sky Patrol members actually mentioned piloting skills in their file cards. Matter of fact, I pretty much still think that all of them are actually in the Army and Paratroopers. But the thing is, is that Slipstream here actually has silver wings. Uh, molded onto his chest and picked out in paint here. And even though it's not picked out in paint on altitude, the mold is still there. 
so you can at least pretend that he has some piloting skills. Altitude is the third Native American in the G.I. Joe line. Of course, if you think of Native Americans in G.I. Joe, you're probably going to be thinking of Spirit first, who comes before him, but is not the first. Matter of fact, he's so popular as a Native American representative in G.I. Joe, we actually get three versions of him in the vintage line, even though we only get one version of the other two. And of course, the very first one is Airborne. One very interesting thing I want to note about them is the skin color. Now granted, skin color between pretty much any ethnic group is going to vary quite a lot. So you really shouldn't take this as gospel, but quite frankly, I think it's kind of strange how Airborne, the very first one, has a very particular dark skin tone. But they didn't go with that with um, Spirit here. As a matter of fact, he's pretty much the same color as most of the Caucasian figures that came out that year. And yet, here we have Altitude, whose skin color is even lighter than that. It's not something which is common to any of the other Sky Patrol figures. His head sculpt is unique to him. And yet, the plastic that they made his head out of is much lighter than any of the other Sky Patrol figures. All the Sky Patrol members have high enlisted ranks. Skydive, Airwave, and Drop Zone are E-8 Master Sergeants, while Static Line and Airborne are E-7 Sergeant First Class. Except for Altitude. He holds the unique rank of E-9 Sergeant Major of the Army. It's odd that they didn't give this rank to Skydive, their leader. Almost all the Sky Patrol figure card art was the same between North America, the UK, and Europe. Except Altitude. For some reason, his UK and Europe release card art was redone. The background paratroopers are removed and his chute is deployed, but otherwise it's very similar. The only explanation I can think of is that the master artwork being sent from the US didn't survive the Atlantic journey and had to be recreated by Hasbro UK. It certainly doesn't have the same vibe you get from classic Hector Garrido card art. And now to take a look at Airborne. Take a look at his common accessory. The backpack which all Sky Patrol figures came with, this time just molded in grey. Of course with the uh, silver parachute inside. He also came with a rather large battle rifle. Not sure if this is based on a real world armament. It does have the lines of an AR-15 of sorts, but it also has a really big chunky uh, magazine here and a shrouded barrel, kind of making me think that this is some type of auto shotgun rather than an assault rifle. And he also comes with a removable helmet. With a really cool painted on red visor. Airboard's mold donor was the Tomahawk Pilot, the 1986 lift ticket. One very interesting thing which caught my eye right away is that lift ticket has that silver, uh, silver wings on his chest. And here it's totally picked out in paint on Airborne's. Very interesting. So again, you can totally pretend that he has piloting skills despite the fact that it isn't mentioned at all on his file card. Taking a look at Airborne's head sculpt. All the Sky Patrol heads were unique, as well as the accessories. You can see that he has a little Superman curls in the front there. And I'm sure you knew that I was going to address this sooner or later, because he's not the only Airborne in the line. We also get 1983 Airborne, who is also a paratrooper. Now, I don't know whether this was just something that Hasbro did to maintain the name, copyright or something, or perhaps because they actually did have another Native American in the Sky Patrol line, perhaps at one point 
he was actually going to be a member of Sky Patrol, and they just sort of switched up the names and just made them all unique characters. Because that's the thing with um, Sky Patrol, is that they're made up of all new characters. There are no pre-existing G.I. Joes in their sub-team, which is actually fairly strange because, well, we don't only have Airborne, but we also have Ripcord and Freefall, who are pre-existing G.I. Joes, and yet none of them are part of Sky Patrol. If you're looking for either of these guys on the aftermarket, I'm happy to say that they're fairly easy to find, complete with all their accessories. They're fairly sturdy figures with fairly sturdy accessories. So I wouldn't really have to look out for breakages all that much. But it's actually fairly interesting that Altitude here comes with the most accessories to make him complete. Whereas Airborne here comes with the least accessories to make him complete out of all of the Sky Patrol figures. Of course, the one thing you do have to look out for, which is often missing, is of course the parachutes in the parachute backpacks. That's really what bumps up the value for a lot of these Sky Patrol figures, unfortunately. So while I really do like them, it's hard to recommend them because so many collectors really want them and they're very popular within the collector community. So their value is really high right now. I do have to say though that I love all of the designs for the Sky Patrol. There's really not a bad design, at least for me, uh, in the entire set of six. But Airborne is my favorite out of all of them. I love the gray on gray color scheme with little pops of silver. It's kind of like a Firefly color scheme now that I come to think of it. But I really like how it's topped off with that little pop of red on his visor. And finally we have the Sky Shark, or S-H-A-R-C which would have originally stood for Submersible High Speed Attack and Reconnaissance Craft, which is what the 1984 original mold for this would have been. However, on the box and on the blueprints, while it does mention having torpedoes and some aquatic um, capabilities, it doesn't actually really specifically say that it's a submarine. But uh, please be warned that I've looked at the blueprints an instruction sheet and it doesn't have foam inside it like the 1984 version so I don't believe that this is a floating vehicle. Taking a look at the features it has all the same features as the original 1984 version which I'll compare to later but first let's take a look at the gullwing cockpit. Gullwing simply meaning that it opens sideways like this and as you can see, it doesn't have a traditional seat. It just intends for you to lie a figure flat like this. I guess it looks okay. And the figure is kind of secure in there anyway. It's uppermost armaments, which are underneath these covers on these uh, big jet engines or whatever they are. They can be accessed through the, these push buttons. You push them forward, like this, and the guns pop out. It's a nice little feature, which I'm glad they did not take out. Of course, you retract them by pulling the lever backwards. On the top, we have a removable engine cover to show you engine detail. And on the back we have a pair of rudders, which are fairly, fair, they're fairly flimsy. They were fairly flimsy on the original 1984 version, and they're quite frankly very flimsy here. On the bottom we have two large torpedoes done in white plastic. You'll notice that it has a really large hole for a really large peg at the back here. And that's because in addition to having um, the option of putting a torpedo on, you can actually store a figure on there as well because it's the size of a back peg. So you can put a figure on there. And originally this was for a diver, which you know kind of makes sense. You have a diver in full scuba gear. And now to compare the Sky Shark with its original mold donor, the 1984 Shark. 
Unfortunately, if you're planning on restoring a Sky Shark with parts from the original, which is far more common, unfortunately, there are no plastic parts which are uh, colored the same, except for the canopy. The canopy is pretty much the only thing which uh, has carried over. The tint is pretty much exactly the same as far as I can tell. As a matter of fact, if I just take this thing off very, very carefully, you can see one of the problems which both the Sky Shark and the original Shark, and I think pretty much any uh, version that uses the original Shark mold will have, is that the tabs which hold on the uh, windshield on the one side are almost always cracked on either one side, the other side, or both sides. These are tiny little tabs which go under these hooks, which quite frankly... Um, are just made to snap these things off. And like I said on my shark review, this thing does not resemble any type of traditional submarine or even terrestrial aircraft for that matter. It really reminds me of something out of Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica. It just has that sort of sci-fi vibe. And while I couldn't really excuse it on the shark, it's actually easier to excuse it on the sky shark because, well, you're really not nailed down as to what this thing can do. It actually could be a rocket for all you want to do with it. And the silver really kind of emphasizes that beyond what the original off-white for the shark really did. If you're looking for a Sky Shark on the aftermarket, despite the fact that it comes with easily lost torpedoes, an engine cover, the rudders, and of course the condition of the canopy you have to look out for, it's actually a fairly easy vehicle to find on the aftermarket complete with all of its parts and usually in very good condition. The fact of the matter is is that my version is very very play worn and yet as I've been saying these Brazil made vehicles with their very heavy chroming are still incredibly shiny after all these decades. So finding one in very good condition shouldn't be a problem. Unfortunately all Sky Patrol vehicles and figures are very, very popular with collectors and they have a premium on the aftermarket. As a matter of fact, the size of this vehicle kind of makes it about equal to the Sky Patrol Sky Hawk on the aftermarket price range.
This is the scale. The lift. Or even traditional aircraft kind. It's like. This review was made possible by the Yojo Outlet Center, specializing in vintage G.I. Joe toys and parts.